All right, we're back again to discuss ST elevations and depressions. This is part three of the EKG mini series Nitty Gritty. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to be talking about uh, ST elevation while we see it, ST depression while we see it. We're going to show you some visuals of that happening. And then we'll discuss some things for the time that we have left. We have some visuals that we've already pulled out here. So this first EKG, first of all, we're not going to be able to cover every single version of a STEMI on here. Uh, there is some other things that we'll talk about later um, in the wild card series that'll fit here. But anyway, this first EKG shows ST elevations where, Michael? It shows it in 2, 3, and ABF. Right. Um, and basically what we want you to think of it as is that the electricity can't travel through that portion of the heart as well as it used to because that portion of the heart doesn't have blood flow like it used to. Does so that make sense? That's why we see the ST elevation on the EKG. Right. And then we see the reciprocal, if you will, which is the side opposite or the matching side, if you will. Give us your fraction example. Well, when I was in paramedic school and we started doing EKGs, uh, they started talking about reciprocal changes. And just so I wasn't asked a stupid question, I kind of just looked up like what reciprocal meant. Reciprocal? When you think in the mathematic world, so the reciprocal of one fourth, the fraction one fourth, is going to be four over one. Right. So it's inversely that fraction. Inversely. Yeah. Good word. So when you have ST elevation, right, the reciprocal changes would be inversely the ST elevation. So you would have ST depression. Sure. A pretty close to that many millimeters. Right. And that it, it's not a hundred percent of the time. Nothing's a hundred percent of the time, but it, it it is there. And so for this one you see a little bit of, of reciprocal changes. Here's a great picture, we thought, um, of, of an inferior MI. It basically involves the back part of the, of the heart. Here's a, an anatomic picture, but then also you see the 2, 3, and AVF is elevated, and then you see like the lateral leads, or AVL, <clears throat> would be depressed. And if, if, it, if you were able to see more of it, you would see more depressions. So I wonder why that heart rate's so high on the MI. It's, uh, typically, you don't see them that high. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's interesting. All right, so we're going to go to the next picture right here. This next picture, uh, it, we're just going to throw it up for just a quick minute right here. This is kind of the area that is involved in the different types of infarct of the heart. Yeah. The particular vessels that are involved, yep. the arteries that I are involved. I love a color-coded picture. I'm well, way, I found way better it. with that. How about here? Uh, we were talking this morning about I see all leads, and you were kind of confused about that. I don't know why you guys don't use that in the hospital, but we use that particularly pre-hospital um, to determine where our STEMI is occurring. On the um, so I see all leads, uh, inferior septal, anterior, and lateral. And right here's a good display of the particular leads that follow into that. Uh, two, three AVF. You're gonna have your inferior leads, mm -hmm. which was what we had a while ago. Right. You can make your specific diagnosis that that was an inferior STEMI. Right. Uh, V1, V2, you're going to have your septal leads and anterior V3, V4, and then lateral. And then you get your combinations, like at the Chinese restaurant, when you have your combinations, mm -hmm. like anterior, The septal. combo platter? Yep. Yeah. Poo-poo poo -poo platter. I do the general so. <laughs> so you understand what I'm talking about when you get, right. like, anterior septal or anterior lateral. Right. I love those. Do you know, um, I don't know if we pulled up a picture, but if we could always recap the picture of what we showed when we put those monitor, you know, the little, um, the actual electrodes on that guy. Remember that? And we were trying to show why. And that's, this is, this changes, the, the morphology changes, the way it looks is because the electricity doesn't travel the way it did and reaches those electrodes in exactly the same way as they used to. Does and it sense? also has a good, it also has a good picture above here as well as what part of the heart's affected again i know we keep driving that home but these you know it's just a different way of learning maybe yeah. if you continue to put it up there you right. kind of start to get it you know and it, and it was tough when i called you the other day and we're going to mention this very quickly when i talked to you the other day and i was like i just can't digest the picture and i was talking to you about pericarditis i know that pericarditis, STEMI mimicker with ST elevation and just about all leads. Right. Diffuse ST segment elevation. Mm -hmm. But I was talking to you about opposite views of the heart. You know, in, in general, when you take specific opposite views of the heart, and we're going to throw up a picture on there. I don't have it pulled up, but you sent it to me mm -hmm. about 
where you can actually look at opposite leads and highly suspect pericarditis sure. without diffuse ST segment elevation. Sometimes that is verbalized as either pericarditis right. or the biggest freaking STEMI that you've ever ran. Right, and they're going to be pretty sick if they have that, by oh, the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In addition, the pericarditis thing, the other thing, and we can put pericarditis even under the wild card session, um, interestingly enough, is, is PR depression. But we can cover that in the wild card session. I like this slide oh, right here. Oh, this is it because you, you've got all the electrodes on yeah, here, right? The reason I like this the, because there's a lot of technical terminology right. that you refuse to let use, um, atrial depolarization. Um, again, you're like, oh, I don't think we need to talk no, about it. No, we don't it. need to do all that. Uh, ventricular repoll. I, I really like the fact. And it gives you a good view of your ST right. segment right there at the J point. However, the, if you look at B, it kind of talks about how... The progression of the it ST evolves. segment. Hey, yeah. is it? Is this look pretty accurate of what you're yeah. seeing in the yeah. hospital? Look yeah. at that. Yeah, because then they normalize and they have a big Q wave. So look, what I what I think is pretty interesting is how the seconds, how how big that T wave is mm -hmm. compared to uh to compared to the other. Let me let me mute my phone. No, I, I hope the listeners can listen to we it. Get some gum too. Um. So. This is, a, yeah, I think this is a great picture also. I think also, you know, the other thing is we're, you know, we're covering this globally. So the ST elevations are one thing, but then you also have ST depressions. And mm -hmm. what does that mean? Besides being reciprocal, you can have ST depressions alone. So why are we seeing those ST depressions? You looked it up on your phone. Well, I did. I wanted to make sure I used a, the most simple explanation. So besides it being the reciprocal change in a STEMI, the other part is, is it can be ischemia but not all the way through the cardiac muscle and so it just lets everybody know that hey there's there's not real good blood flow over here all right i'm gonna put you on the spot here you ready i guess quick question put the patient on the monitor you have no st segment elevation and you just have st depression and a couple of leads what's your what, what's your concern there is that maybe you just have a damaged heart that have had a previous MI. Sure, that could be their norm for them. Or what if it's a posterior MI? Ooh -wee. Oh boy. Are we going to go into placement of that? We probably should. One? Well, but we probably should look at what an EKG looks like for a posterior MI in a regular, a regular placed EKG, like the regular leads. Not. I know if I have depression in V one through V four, I got a posterior MI. I think. Yeah, hold please. Okay, so this EKG is regular placement of all the leads. And you see this, there's actually depression in V1, if you can appreciate it. It's a small I told amount. you, V1 through V4, you're going to have depression. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You want an award? <laughs> so those are all depressed. And then that should make you think, oh, shoot. I bet the back part of the heart is, is bad. Yeah. We so then it. we're going to do a posterior EKG. Show us what that means, Michael. So this is a picture, and I thought it was good for, for Mike to suggest that we put it back up here with the leads as they normally are, which you see on the front there. And then you just add three leads to the back. And instead of connecting, because you don't have a 15 lead, you got to take the four, five, and six and, and put them on seven, eight, nine. Giving you a 15 lead. Right. So then how does it look if we do a posterior EKG, Michael? Meaning... And, and real quick to be said... Make sure when you do this view right here that four, five, V4, V5, V6 become V7, V8, V9. You got and you it. And you write it down on the paper. That's right. So here's an example of how it looks. So they've, they've nicely labeled 7, 8, and 9. And look at that. What does that look like? That looks like a posterior semi. Boom! There's the elevation. And look at those reciprocal changes. Wow. Seven this... eights, eight sevens, seven eights, eight sevens. Right, and I would, I would argue you got some inferior damage too. But... Yeah. Um, one more thing, Michael, let's pull up just to, to be complete. Let's pull up an EKG that just has ST depressions, not saying it's a posterior anything. Um, and then one of pericarditis, just so our viewers can see it, even though we're going to talk further about that stuff. And don't worry, we're going to talk more about Scarbosa criteria coming up. In the wild card. Yep. Here's an EKG that shows kind of diffuse ST depressions. Wouldn't you say, Michael? I'd like to know their potassium. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'd like to know if they're dead now or not. <laughs> That's mainly what I would like to know. So this is one that you just have diffuse ST depression. Yep. So here's the EKG for pericarditis. Now, 
listen, doctors included will call STEMI on a pericarditis mm-hmm. EKG. No, no, no shame in that, honestly. If you don't know, you don't know. But if you look at it, there's ST elevations in one, two, a little bit in three, AVF. There's elevations of kind of across the board in V3 before V5. I mean, that's a ton. Yeah, and then that's see, everywhere. Yeah, the depressions in PR, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then that you can say... Um, uh, looks looks pretty consistent with pericarditis. Uh, and just really quickly, pericarditis, inflammation of the pericardial sac. Right, right. right. Yep. Uh, there's some neat information in there as far as EKG findings and spotic sign if you want to um, look at that uh, as well. So take a look at it and hopefully you learn something. Yep, and I think in the wild card series we'll talk about happy faces and smiley faces with ST segments. And soup ladles. <gasps> Can we talk about the jocks? The hockey stick? Yeah. Salvador Dali's mustache. All kinds of weird things. All right. Till next time. Bye, guys.